Good morning, everybody. <coughs> Your Holiness the Dalai Lama, His Eminence uh, Kanten Rinpoche, Most Venerable Tangu Rinpoche, Most Venerable Murthaz Rinpoche, Distinguished Scholars and Scientists on the Dais as Speakers, Moderators, and Respondents, the Distinguished Guests Dignitaries, including many of the Vice Chancellors, participant scholars from foreign countries and from various parts of India. More than 200 alumni have come from different uh, parts of the world. Faculty and students of our exchange program from United States and uh, Australia our faculty, staff, and students. Of course, the media friends who help us to reach out to a wider audience, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. I welcome and thank each and every one of you for being with us, especially Your Holiness the Dalai Lama, for your graceful presence. It is a great pleasure that in the presence of your holiness, we are conducting this uh, two days conference on mind <coughs> in Indian philosophical schools of thought and modern science. <coughs> This is a confluence of rivers of ancient wisdom and modern science. Today, we have scholars representing Sankhya, Vedanta, Nyaya, Jainism, and Theravada and Mahayana from Buddhism and science. In India, interaction between philosophical schools is a millennia old rich tradition. Because of this rich tradition, of interaction, which can be said as a samvad, in real sense, it gave rise to the highly sophisticated system of philosophy, epistemology, and logic. Except Charvak school, all the Indian philosophical schools maintain mind as the most important subject of study and research and contemplation and introspection. All the ontological speculations found in these schools are related to mind and mental transformation. Since the objectives of uh, these schools are attainment of uh, happiness and peace, entire philosophical system are inextricably related to their soteriological system. Without transformation of mind, peace in general and particularly transcendental peace is not at all possible. Hence, each school has a rich account of mind and mental system and their transformative measures. In this modern scientific age, when it is being observed that material development alone cannot address human suffering, it is important to bring in, in the forefront the rich account of mind and mental system of Indian philosophical school and their measures of training the mind and transformation. This can, be, can benefit a wider human community. In the last more than two decades, modern scientists have begun to explore into the realm of mind, particularly that of emotions, with the initiatives of your holiness. This has brought many fruitful results in neuroscience, psychology, clinical research, education, and health. It is widely being felt that this trend of research is bringing a revolution in the world which will have a deep impact on every aspect of our life. This university has an ongoing program of interaction between Buddhist and non-Buddhist philosophical schools interaction between within Buddhist schools, Buddhist traditional schools, interaction with the Western philosophy 
and more modern science. <coughs> Your Holiness has been very kindly kind to bless many of such occasions. Since we have time constraint, I do not want to take more time to go into the uh, subject matter. I hope that this two-day conference on mind in Indian philosophical schools of thought and modern science will certainly be a fruitful deliberation with, the, uh, with your holiness's uh, presence and guidance. Now I would like to request your holiness to kindly give the opening remarks of this uh, two-day uh, conference on mind in Indian philosophical schools of thought and modern science. At the beginning, I want to go there. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Just be sure. Do you say so? No. <coughs> Dear respected, I think here, sisters and brothers. <laughs> and then the rest of brothers, sisters. Indeed, a great honor to come to participate this. I think, important meeting. Now, I want to start with my talk. Now we are beginning of 21st century. Over a thousand years, we human beings use intelligence sometimes more destructive way. I think very concept of war exists to only human species of mammal, no other. Some monkey, some animal may have, but not that kind of destructive. So now we still century old or habit whenever we find some disagreement or some different interest, we still believe use force. Now that thinking, century old that thinking, is according to new reality, that thinking is outdated. Seven billion human beings they have to live on this planet. And the future of Eastern world depend on West. West depend East, uh, similarly, North and South. And then uh, the global economy. National boundary, not important. Then on top of that, global warming. These are the more serious sort of new development. So now time will come. 
They say we must develop conviction. The use force is outdated. Uh, any differences among human brothers and sisters must solve through talk, through dialogue. So I usually describe this 21st century in order to create uh, a peaceful century, we must develop this century should be century of dialogue. So nowadays, dialogue, not science of weakness, but wisdom. Uh, more realistic. Today's sort of reality, even you have nuclear power, use nuclear weapon, then not like ancient time. Ancient time, war means destroy your enemy. That is victory over yourself. Now today's reality, if you use sort of this immense powerful weapon, mutual destruction. So now thinking, old thinking is outdated. Unfortunately, now today's world, still, you see, people consider weapon is important. Produce more weapon and spend more money for military purpose. Uh, I think now uh, we people who totally committed about peace, uh, about the well-being of humanity. Now we have some special responsibility. Then these are sort the of problem. Why now that happening is our intelligence not properly used. Uh, our intelligence, marvelous human intelligence, now become disposable of anger, self-centered attitude. So now here, you see, we have the responsibility, and our main response, main sort of purpose is discuss how to introduce our younger generation, more compassionate mind, combine combination, compassion, and intelligence. These two things must go together. So frankly speaking, existing modern education system, I feel uh, very much oriented about the material value, not talking about our inner value. So now, inner value is concerned. Of course, I respect all religions, wonderful. Thousand years, you see, various different tradition brings immense sort of inspiration to human being. Still, but uh, now the Indian tradition, uh, where the spiritual tradition, including uh, shamatha, practice of shamatha, practice of vipassana, automatically involve about, um, about knowledge, about our emo emotion, about mind. Oh. The very purpose of vipassana, analyze the reality. And then shamatha, channelize our mental energy. So, Indian tradition, where practice of shamatha and vipassana automatically more explanation about human mind, about the human emotion. Now, these traditionally come from religious text because of context. But now we should consider these are academic subject, not religious subject. It's a more knowledge about our emotion. With that, uh, we are become better positioned to tackle about this emotion. Now today's world, a lot of problem. Actually, our own creation. 
no human being want problem. And now some scientists say basic human nature is more compassionate. Oh. So that's really hopeful sign. So now the problem is education, not talking about this inner value. Oh. So therefore, the in, from Indian tradition, knowledge about uh, psychology, uh, emotion, these things, I think uh, not only ancient one, but very, very use relevant to this world, I feel. So now we should be more active. Hmm? Uh, these big sort of academicians sort of meeting, uh, wonderful, but we should not forget why we are here, peaceful, happy, same human being, killing. just a neighbor, Afghanistan, and Syria, and then Yemen. Millions of children dying due to conflict like that. And we saw, you see, these dying children. Then we are part of the humanity. Some, somewhere in the same planet, same human being suffer we cannot remain kasa, indifferent. We have to think seriously. So now, time come, we need sense of oneness of seven billion human beings. And we, as a Buddhist, Buddhist practitioner, whether successful or not, <laughs> we suppose Buddhist practitioner, <laughs> so we always pray entire sentient being. But in reality, now, only seven billion human beings, we can do something. Other limitless sentient beings, only prayer, nothing can be done. Uh, so, seven on this planet, uh, so a limitless different sentient being, we can't do anything. Just prayer. Uh, only now possibility is six, seven billion human beings. We have same human brain human language, so we can share our experience. The inner peace is so important, even for our health. Oh. So everybody take care of one's own health. So now these days I telling the hygiene of physical, we usually learning. So now very important, hygiene of emotion must include, not talking about a nirvana, our next life, just this very life. More healthier body, uh, mentally happier, then one individual transforms that way, uh, the combination of human being, then human community, then national, the nation, nations, then finally seven billion human beings. So I'm hoping this kind of conference they say, seriously discuss the present our crisis. Uh, not sufficient, just to repeat past. Oh. <laughs> past is past. <laughs> now, we, this is the beginning of 21st century. If we make a certain effort uh, with vision and a systematic sort of plan, there is possibility, some change. So, that I want to to share with you. That's all. Thank you.